Hello, pet lovers. It's time for Marcy's Menagerie on 1480 WDJO. For the next hour, your host, pet care expert Marcy Hall Newbold, and her trusty basset hound Nosy will share the latest information to help you give your furry, feathery, and finny friends the happiest and healthiest lives possible. You're invited to call to ask questions of Marcy's guests. The number is 513-749-1480. Now, here's Marcy. You have been very accessible. You've made yourself accessible to to the public. And so you you have a, a tremendous number of fans. Like I, I said, when I told people that you were going to be on the show, it seemed like everyone had a good John Ruthven story. And my friend yeah. um my friend um Bev Harbor, her um, father, she she said, oh, she said, I'm not going to be able to call in the show, but my father, Lou Ogsinger from Fort Thomas, used to work with um, with Mr. Ruthven. And she said, you should ask, does he remember? Oh, I sure do remember him, but I'm trying to think where the connection was. Woodworking, yeah. something, maybe? Well, it was probably when I was discharged from the Navy, the only job that I ever had, oh, I wasn't working for myself, was with a company called Product Presentation on Gilbert Avenue, and they specialized in display work. I did all their artwork for them, and I met a lot of the fellows who that did sounds, all that. That sounds familiar, that, and they would execute the, um, your, your work. Yeah, absolutely. Uh-huh. And so then I went into my own, own uh, business and been there ever since. You know what I liked is, uh, Jen, thank you for calling. We're, yeah, thanks, Jen. It, but you, you know what I what I really loved is you said that's the only job I ever had, and you you can tell that your livelihood has has been your passion. It hasn't just been a job to oh, you. Oh, that's exactly right, Marcy. In fact, someone a couple of weeks ago said, "John, when are you going to retire?" And see, I'm having my 89th birthday, and I said, "Retire from and what?" And he doesn't look 89 <laughs> at all. I, it's unbelievable. <laughs> well, thank you. It's uh, I I appreciate that and. Uh, uh, it's very nice to know that you're still up and around, and I still uh, paint every day. And uh, as I said, I'll never retire. That's super. Hey, we have Bob the producer on on the phone. He used to to be on W E B N. Remember oh, Bob sh- the producer? Yeah. He's he well he he is doing a segment for me every week called Heavy Petting, and he's he's <laughs> calling in live. He was so excited that you were going to be oh, here. Oh, Bob! My gosh. Yep. Hi. How Hi, are Bob. you? Good, good. And I, in honor of the occasion, I am, because I don't know if you realize this, Mr. Rethman's been a huge influence on me. So uh, thank you, and in honor of your guest, Marcy, John Rethman, um, the premier wildlife artist, I think, I oh, decided to you. capture a few of my pets, recapture them since my wife JoJo captured them once, and I tried painting a few of my pets, but it was a disaster, and I probably <laughs> needed two coats. <laughs> I, I lack Mr. Ruffin's steady hand, and I had trouble getting him to sit for me, especially Charlie, a rescue dog. He's very fidgety and nutso. It reminds me when I was a studio, sitting in for a portrait at Olin Mill Studio, and the art, artiste or the photographer left the studio to get a squeak toy to make me smile. <laughs> and when he returned, I was buck naked because I wanted it to be natural. Oh. Talk about wildlife. <laughs> I'd already heard subjects pose nude. Now, I know, Mr. Reppens, Martha, the last passenger pigeon, was on natural, right? Right. <laughs> I, and, I, but it had some feathers, but she couldn't take it, remove them. <laughs> well, like we're all naked turtle. underneath our feathers. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. So I know animals can sense things like whether I have any or not. And, and I realized that beauty is in the eye of the holder. And I was holding Charlie on my lap <laughs> and before I, I could capture the moment. But, you know, I, do, I don't know much about art, but I know what I like. And I know your name is John and not mm-hmm. art. I started out to drawing <laughs> straws, then uh, crazy straws, usually the short one, then progressed to drawing breath, drawing the bath. For the dogs, the cats were more of a challenge come bath time, and I had trouble staying inside the lines. But unlike Martha, the last passenger pigeon, my bird, Lamb, would never sit still for me. took flight, and our horse, Bucko, would as soon as I got out my easel. It wasn't easy. <laughs> oh, you've had a hard time. I did. I did. I wish I, wish I so it turns out I captured my best pets like this after being tranquilized. Not them, me. I had to sedate myself because they were so fidgety. So, John, I wanted to say it's an honor and a privilege, and I'm a big fan of your work. 
And um, I, um, I do have a lot of pets here, and I'm, I haven't been very successful capturing their likenesses, but um, I'm, good. I'm, I'm still trying. I'm still trying. Well, Bob, uh, a handy thing to have is a camera. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, that makes a lot. Of, yeah, I should be able to do that. Yeah, yes, right. right. I'm not. I'm not much of an artist. But um, but you are, and, and and you said you'd have no plans to retire. That's great. Yeah, no plans at all. In fact, I've got just a, a lot of commissions to do and many things to conquer yet. Really cool. Mm-hmm. Well, well, great. I'm. Um, I wish I was there in the studio with you. I would like to meet you, but uh, just hearing you on the radio does it for me. And. Uh, and, like, we really do have, we have, like, three dogs and a bunch of cats, and we have a horse, and we used to have a bird, so it's pretty crowded here. Oh, man, that sounds great. <laughs> it's like my neighbors, the Donahues. They have five dogs in their house, and one's a Great Dane. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so somebody else in the household has to go out to the doghouse, eh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you're right. <laughs> well, thank you, John, and, okay. uh, and it's a pleasure to talk to you. A pleasure to talk to you, and thanks for calling, Bob. <laughs> And it's a pleasure to talk to you, Marcy. You too. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. Bye. He and his wife have, have uh, triplet grandchildren, uh, all three grandsons, triplets, and they're all like, they're sick. Gina, I'll you know, I always think we have more children than we have hands we can capture them. Or, but, we already did have you petting, so we're going straight into you. Okay, I have a, um, a, um, a weekly contest. Um, when it gets fast in graders. And um, so anyway, I'm going to ask you to ask the question. And I wrote it out. One of my best known paintings, this is the last living passenger pigeon who died at the Cincinnati Zoo in 1914. What was the passenger pigeon's name? So you can come up with any. <laughs> Okay, so we're now on the third segment. Uh, when we come back, yeah. No, no, okay, because then David can be on the board. On WDJO 1480, and my guest is John Russon, the wildlife artist. And if you'd like to join our conversation, if you have a question um, or, or have something that you'd like to weigh in with, please phone us at 513 513- 749-1480. Again, 513-749-1480. Our lines are open now. Or also friend me on my Facebook page, Marcy Hall Newbold, M-A-R-S-I-E, Hall, H-A-L-L, Newbold, N-E-W-B-O-L-D. And you can link there to videos, podcasts, recipes, and well, all sorts of just fun and, and even sometimes goofy things. Mr. Ruffin, every week we have a contest, and my sponsor, Graders, gives us a really cute, it's, I, I couldn't say it's a gift basket, it's more of a, of a gift doggy bowl with bones on it and, um, and, and a bag of gourmet um, Graders brand dog treats and a $10 Graders gift card and a Graders bandana for your dog and, and a... Um, and a leash, and so we have a question that we ask, and I'm going to have Mr. Ruffin read read the question, and if you have the answer, please give us a call. Again, the number is 513-749-1480, and the first caller with the correct answer will win the prize. Well, thank ready? you, Marcy. Yes, I am ready. One of my best-known paintings is one of a passenger pigeon. It's a very famous bird, and... Uh, it's the last living passenger pigeon that died in the Cincinnati Zoo in 1914. It was very famous, and if you could give me the name, that would be just great. And you'll win. It Dial in to 513-749-1480. Our lines are open now. But I wanted to ask you about that. This past summer, you were very busy with art with our friends at Artworks. And could you tell tell us about the mural project? Oh, you know, this was very exciting you know, to do this. I was asked by the Smithsonian Institute to paint a very special painting 
uh, denoting the life of Martha, the, I mean, the last passenger of his. Oh! <laughs> okay, okay. Even, even, even the most most famous goof up. All right, let's, let's come up with another question. You, you, you get to come up with it since you messed it up. Messed oh, it I really up. messed it up. Okay, John, really come on. Okay, I got to come up with another question. Uh, let's see. Let me. Th can I think about it? A minute? Sure, you can think about it for a minute. But all these okay. people who called in are really angry with me. <laughs> <laughs> they were talking about all the goodwill and how accessible you are to everyone. And now everybody in town's okay. mad at you. All right, I've got one. Uh, during the history of this country, when they were trying to determine, determine what to use as our national emblem, there, as you know, the national emblem is the bald eagle. But we have a very famous predecessor who wanted another bird to be the national emblem. Can you tell me what that is? All right, people. Uh, let's let's call in. Call in the station. Our our lines are still open oh. at five one three. 749-1480. All right, All right so now I'll continue on with my mural. With anyway, Martha. With Martha. It started with the Smithsonian. They wanted to do a worldwide celebration of this fantastic and epic thing that happened in our own Cincinnati Zoo, where an entire species of birds disappeared in a matter of about 40 years, when there were millions and millions of them around. At any rate, I did this at their behest. My original painting was six feet by three feet, and then a lot of people heard about this and wanted uh, to do something with me and that painting. And one was artworks in Cincinnati. They called me and said, John, we have a wonderful wall downtown on uh, Vine Street between 7th and 8th. Would you come down and take a peek at it? We'd like to reproduce your painting That's right. of Martha uh, on that wall. And I said, oh, I'd be delighted. I went down and viewed the wall, and it was uh, very exciting. It was three stories high and 90 feet long. But I'm depicting not only Martha, but millions of her own kind in the great swirl going from her, who's life-size on my painting, down to just dots behind some historic buildings in the Cincinnati Zoo. And you might remember the old bird room. And these were yes. yeah, Japanese pagoda-like buildings. And they were the first buildings in the first zoo in the country. The Cincinnati Zoo was the first, but not the first chartered zoo. The Philadelphia Zoo is the first charter. But at any rate, these buildings were uh, designed uh, by a wonderful architect named Charles McLaughlin, who did a lot of historic buildings in downtown Cincinnati. So the painting was not only significant from an architectural standpoint, but from the millions of pigeons that flew around North America. This was a big thing in those days. And they were uh, used for every known purpose, including eating. They must have been delicious, but there's no one living today that has been justified of that. They probably say it tastes like chicken. <laughs> yeah, they <laughs> might. <laughs> yeah. So uh, 